will you experience at a Knock'em Dead comedy murder mystery show? Suspense, excitement, love, more love, violence. Well, not really. And, of course, some music. Knock'em Dead comedy is the number one murder mystery troupe, entertaining thousands of people for over 20 years. You have a great night of one. Their hilarious murder mystery shows are full of audience interaction from beginning to end that will keep you laughing all night long. Their shows are not to be missed. Knock'em Dead Comedy's murder mystery themes include a mob show, a redneck wedding, a high school reunion, a family reunion with a luau theme, or your own custom show. Johnny, you have a good time tonight or what? I had an awesome time. All right. She had a great time. That's what I'm talking about! Yeah, yeah! All right! Fundraisers, private parties, corporate events, restaurants, and more. Contact Knock'em Dead Comedy for your event today. The Knock'em Dead Comedy Radio Show also brought to you by Two Eagles Auto Body. For more than 25 years, Two Eagles Auto Body has been the leader in auto body repairs and customer satisfaction on Long Island. Two Eagles Auto Body handles every type of auto repair from custom applications and restorations to repairs involving insurance claims. So call Two Eagles Auto Body and ask for John Rossi at 516-328-2527. Hi, I'm Danny Bonaducci, and you are watching Govs Radio. This is where you go if you want to see something or if you want to hear something funny. <laughs> Coming up in just a couple minutes, this is a joke I told. What? What? I'm not on Dove Radio. Call the police. Call my agent. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's Thursday. Welcome to the Knock of Dead Comedy Podcast here on uh, Gov's Comedy Club's Twitch channel. Thanks for joining us here on Twitch. You see the graphic right above my head. Please follow the channel and subscribe to it and all that good stuff. Please share the link all over the place and tell everybody you know about all the, about all the great shows here at Governor's mm-hmm. on our podcast channel right here on Twitch and on our YouTube and our Facebook and all, all those places. We got, it's going to be a great show today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Johnny Lambros is back there. John LaRocchia is here. John LaRocchia is here. Ooh. And Mo Melt, of course. <clears throat> um, all right. So w- there's a lot going on. I think there's going to be a wrestling match, I think. I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to start with Mr. LaRocchia. It's got to be, at this point, at least 15 years ago, if not more, <clears throat> I became friends with Mr. Les Deegan. 
He was Gen- the biggest gentleman in the business. Yes, the the forget the business, just probably the nicest guy you'll ever meet in your life. Good man, it helps me a lot right now with left. I sucked him up when he retired. Well, that's a whole different show. I don't want to know about well, that. Well, not something. Um, He's great. Time for the uh, wrestling, I think. <clears throat> yes. And he um, he was doing a show with me, my, with my comedy troupe, with Knock'em Dead Comedy. So he was doing stand-up at um, like a, not a Borders, but like one of those. Like the, yes. That, and I went to go watch, and he was great. And I was not. I wasn't involved in Governors at the time. I wasn't involved really with stand-up or anything. It was the first time I ever saw Carrie Caravis. I was like, oh, my God, she was fantastic. Fantastic. And then you were the headliner. I was like, holy... I mean, I couldn't believe the talent between Les and you and Carrie. And there were one or two other people. Pat uh, uh, Pat Gagliardi was on the the bill. And then uh, there might have been one or two others. But you and Carrie especially just blew me away. Uh, and then we've been. Of you to say. Of course. Um, of course. It's been a long road with my comedy. Yep. Uh, quit, you know, quit after 9-11 for a little while for obvious reasons. Right. But um, I'm, I'm never, I have not had more fun than I am having now. Oh, okay. Oh, I can wow. get, I get up on stage now <clears throat> and not care. Oh, I would, thought you meant with us here now. And here today, I was getting to that. Oh, <laughs> but, sorry. I'll get back in but, the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, a, a funny story about Patty G. Yeah. Patty G and I go back way back that we didn't even know how far we went back. No kidding. Was Patty G used to come into my family's luncheonette oh. when he was a young <clears throat> man, maybe a kid, um, in Middle Village, Queens. Oh, wow. And that was my first exposure to comedy because my dad. My uncle and my Italian grandpa with the thick accent used to have so much fun with the customers. Oh, that's Little cool. Little gags behind the counter. Um, and Patty G used to come into the luncheonette. Wow, what we a found small this world. out later on, obviously. <clears throat> but I don't really acknowledge him too much because he doesn't like All-American. And if you don't like All-American, there's something wrong with you. And my my cousin's daughter is married to the boy. Well, he's the boss now. He's the son. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. They're, oh, they got it made over there. What, the All-American people? She yeah. married Votaglio? Uh, is that the last name? I believe so. I went to high school with one of them. Oh, what's no the, What's the first name? Guy or... or some, his name is... The I oldest son was Billy, and I don't remember what the other two brothers' that, names yeah, are. Yeah, it's one of those brothers. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, all those connections going on. Wow, those are good connections to have. I like how we have indirect connections. Yes. yes. That makes me feel very excited. Yes. <laughs> And you were, back then, you were a ball of energy. You are a ball of energy in your act. You're still a ball of energy. You got a lot going on. Even this, when you got here this morning, you got a DMV story and you got a Key Largo story. I did, but Before time, we, there we go. Yes, get close to the mic. But every time I say Key Largo, I have to say, and I'm in Key Largo, right? That song, I've been singing this song. Listen to me. I've been singing this song. You, you day, you're dozing. I've been singing this song for three months. You know, longer than that. We went to Key Largo, went to Key Largo, right? My wife and I and another couple. Is he still here? He was, okay. He's, he just, I, you're scaring he him. The bird. What was that? So we, we went to Key Largo, my wife, and I said, I'm going to rent the bike one day, mm-hmm. right? So I rent the bike early in the morning before the sun comes up. There's the bushes on the main road. There's only one road, right? To Fucking the bushes on the road. So I ride the bike all morning. I ride it down pretty far, and I come back on the other side. And my brother-in-law and his wife had gone to Key West the day before. Motorcycle or bicycle? No, a motorcycle. Yes. Bicycle. Bicycle. Okay. And, and look, had these bought. <laughs> Very comfortable. So I rode the bike there and back. So I said to my brother-in-law when I got back, I go, you know what? Next year, we're going to come back and ride bikes from Miami to Key West and do a few comedy shows along the way. We'll stop overnight at a hotel. We're going to do this. So he looks at me and he goes, it's 120 miles, you know. I go, you know, I biked. Let me show you how far I biked. Google. We Googled the address, whatever. I go, I did six miles today. I did six. And I go, maybe 120 is too far. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. But I'm, now maybe. I'm getting, because I think comics would fly into Key West to do one of the show. We rent a house uh-huh. on vacation. Uh-huh. I ride down with a pace car. Somebody, you know, somebody who's not going to ride the bike. Mm-hmm. Like Pat Marone has already said, he is not going to ride the bike. He'll I'm not riding go a bike. in the car. John <laughs> Santa will go in the car. You know, and uh, I think that would be fun. Absolutely. Right? Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. For four or five days. 
How fast can you go on a bike? What do you think, 10 miles an hour? If that, yeah. All right, so if you're riding 50 <clears throat> miles a day, that's four days. What, what, how many miles did I say? That's, that's three 50. days. Yeah. That's still, you know, what I think you, it can be done. What are you going to do, camp on the bridge? No, I'm going to get <laughs> hotels to give us rooms. You know? Okay. I'm, I'm going to work on it. It's, 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 you know, we've been doing tours on the road sometimes. Sure. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if you hook up with the local fire department, then the local, you know, uh, political people, the local lights of Columbus, people are great. We've been treated great on the road. You know, we, we do shows in memory of the guys lost on 9-11. Right. Mm -hmm. We make people laugh as a way to remember them. <coughs> we raise money for different charities as a way to remember them. So people are very open to help. We, we've had nothing but, you know, great shows except for one in Colorado. Um, we had a problem in Colorado. If you want to hear that story, I'll tell you the story. Yes. Go ahead. Does it involve marijuana? It involved dildo. <coughs> dildos. Does oh. it involve Mormons? No. <laughs> Does it involve mountain climbing? No, not with dildos. Ooh, no. Ooh, ooh, uh, rocks. Does it involve dildo? rocks? I told you it involves dildos. Uh, that, yeah, I want to yeah. You uh, want to hear the story. Exactly. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So the local fire department has a dinner every year. Okay. And they um, honor the guys. It's a gag gift. They give them a dildo. It's a gag. It's a gag. Well, very good. Very good. Very good. It's a gag. It's, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a joke gift, okay? Okay. So what happens now is they get in trouble. The local community finds out that at these dinners, where there are women there also, so the women weren't complaining at the dinners. They were firefighters, whatever. But it was people on the outside. So they said, no more. No more of this. Chief, you're on, you're on call. Anything like this happens again, you're going to lose day's pay, this guy's going to get fired, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. In comes the town, the two New York comics, me and John Consoli, and we hire this comic who's from there, from <coughs> Texas. Okay. She, she John, can I come? Yeah. Did not know that she was a lesbian and does 20 minutes on dildo. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Friday night, we packed, the, we packed the place on a Tuesday night, this comedy club. She gets up there, she's killing it, and I'm like, Wow. She's good, but they're really, they're really <clears throat> laughing hard. Like, she's good, but I don't feel she's that good. What's going on here tonight? So somebody comes up to me after the show and says, that was a great show. Great. We, we're doing a show two days later. Black tie fan. The mayor's going to be there and everything. Right? Oh, wow. I get a call the next day from my point of contact. POC in the fire department world. Point of contact, right? <laughs> she says, John, great show. I said, thank you. She goes, could you do me a favor? No dildo jokes on Facebook. Wednesday, the mayor's going to be there. I go, never had that request before. What's the problem? She tells me the story. I go, oh, my God. I didn't realize. You know John Consoli? Yeah. Well, not personally. I know Marine, who he is. Marine, right? Supposedly the youngest drill sergeant ever in the Marines. Oh. I tell the girl, hey, she goes, John, I got like five minutes of material if I don't do my dildo jokes. I go, I'm sorry. I tell Consoli. I get up there, warm up the crowd. John Consoli. What do you think Consoli does? Whips out no. a bag of dicks. Nope. He oh. tells dildo jokes that he doesn't even have. <laughs> Just because that's how he is. The mayor gets wow. up and leaves. Oh. He saves lives. He's not invited back to, where were we, Denver? Well, I don't know where we were. But the funny part is, now they, they invite her back <coughs> to do another affair, the fire department. They loved her so much with all the dildo jokes, they invite her back, right? Yeah. Well, now the chief gets in trouble, right? Oh. They put it on the news. They show pictures from my show with the laughter saves lives backdrop, right? Oh. Such and such. They're showing the video from the year before. Right. So you guys are taking the heat for this. Laughter saves lives. <laughs> is all, I'm going, oh, my God. Oh. I'm calling this. What are you doing? You know? So... That seems to be a recurring theme with comics. You tell them not to say something. Oh, yeah. And they it's an invite. They say something. Yeah. yeah. Remember the old David Tell story when he did uh, uh, the USO tour with the Howard Stern right. guys, right. Artie and Nick? Yeah. And they told him no masturbating jokes. So he goes up there and goes, let me tell you about a time I made love to a sock with shampoo in it. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. You know. Some comics are like, I'm not like it's that. It's Murphy's Law. You tell them not to do it, they'll find a way to do it. You know, the, the thing is, with when you book shows, it's a different animal. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, lo I love working with some comics. But then if I'm producing the show and people are paying me a lot of money to run the show, it's a di we were in Florida at a another all politicians. It was a, a fire department fundraiser. Politicians galore, black tie affair. The guy says to me, listen, John, 
Do me a favor. It was Tom Dario was with me. Oh, yeah. Brought him to Florida with me. No F-bombs. Mm. I go, no problem. Tommy, no F-bombs. No, no problem, John. He goes off, and they let me sell my shirts before the show, which I never do. Oh, okay. I'm making a killing. this are buying shirts. Wow. Right? Blah, blah, blah. And, that, and that's for the foundation. I sell the shirts for the foundation. So I'm selling the shirts, and I see Tom talking to the point of contact in the corner, but I'm not paying attention. I go up, 20-minute set, warm up the crowd for Tommy. Tom Dario goes up there. He's up there 30 seconds. Ba-boom, F-bomb. Oh. Bada-bing, another F-bomb. Bada -ba I count seven F-bombs, right? Standing ovation. They loved him. But this is the guy that's paying me. Right. The guy that said, don't, right? Right. right. They loved him, right? So he's walking off. What am I going to say to Tom? Right? Oh, great set. What am I going to say? What are you doing? Right? Is it time for Tommy? Great set. I, I look at the point of contact. I'm waiting for him now, right? Never comes over. Says good night. I go, oh, jeez. I'm in the pool the next morning. They had a beautiful. I love I loved the waterfalls in the pools. I'm a waterfall guy. I love running water. So we're in the pool. In the I love running day. water. I do. I do. <laughs> good. I love running water. It relaxes me. So, so the prairie is not for you. No. So I'm in the pool. We're swimming. Tommy's swimming. We eat right after breakfast. We're laughing. And I go, hey, Tommy, let me ask you a question. <laughs> and he says, what? I go, what the fuck were you thinking this? He goes, what do you mean? The guy said, don't use the F-bomb. And you did it seven. I counted. Seven. Are you out of your mind? He goes, no, no, no. When I went on the side, he said to me, you know what, Tom? Don't worry about it. You think oh. you could have told me? I'm over there. <laughs> You're having a heart attack. Oh so it's different when you produce the show. Oh, absolutely. When you're responsible, yeah, it's it's. Uh, and comics don't, yeah. don't don't get that sometimes. You know, I, you know, you look at the equipment too in some of these gigs, right? Oh so yeah, man. I'm getting there four hours before the show. I want to be set up an hour before anybody walks in the door, so I can. On the back, same way. Relax. Yep. Right. Have a little water. Look over my act. Comics walk in the door, and I do it all the time. Rich Walker hired me for a gig a few weeks ago. I walked in, killed, left. Oh, I, yep. I, I shouldn't say killed. I always tell comics, never say you killed. Why? Let it, somebody else say it. Oh, Let somebody else say it. Not actually murder. No, no, what I'm saying so is... So then I can still I, say I killed. I believe... Yes. I, okay. th this is just my thing. I believe that if I did really well, my, my cohorts will tell me and the audience will tell me. I don't need... Because a lot of times I see... Post, that word is used too much. Okay. Oh, he killed, he killed. And I know, it, I know the comics... Some of them are funny, but they didn't kill. So you dilute that term, you know, because you you mentioned Carrie Caravis. Yeah. Kills. There's a killer. Yeah, absolutely. Right? There's a killer. Yeah. Tom Daddario. Killed. Jim Delacus. Killed. Right. They're always killed. Rich Walker. Eh. Rich Walker. Eh. <laughs> eh. So you have, to, you have to use those terms where it's really deserved to dilute it. you got yeah. to earn that. Oh, absolutely. You know? Agree 100%. And, and another thing that I had a pro a, a little bit of, well, I'm going off on tangents. Right. ADHD, really? very ADHD. I keep touching you. I'm sorry. Very ADHD. <laughs> I'm gonna start charging you. Right. I, I would owe you about twenty dollars. Well, what are you charging for a touch? What Depends upon what, where what you're touching. What am I doing? Whoa. Where am I going? Hello. Woo. ADHD, very ADHD. So my family says, go to the doctor. <clears throat> go to the doctor. Get evaluated. You need medication. My family tells me. So I said, all right. So I, I make an appointment with the doctor. I walk in. He goes, John, why are you here? I said, Doc, my family thinks I need to be evaluated. I need to be on meds. He goes, why? Tell me why. So I go through the way I operate. Here's what I do. ba 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 Ten minutes later, I turn around. I said, what do you think? He writes a prescription. He goes, you need, you've just been evaluated. You're a mess. You are a mess. But you know what's interesting? The doctor says, when you take ADHD meds, it's only for the day. Like, that's not something... That you take that last a few days. So right. said, if you're teaching or you doing stand up, don't take the meds. Oh, I agree 100. percent Because here's here's how it would be on stage without right. the meds. Right. You know, and that I'm I'm the type of comic. I believe I'm not a comics comic. It's very you give me a compliment and I appreciate it and I love the compliment. Don't get me wrong, it means a lot to me. But I'm not a comics comic where comics will go. Oh, La Rocky is coming away. Don't leave. Oh, okay. I am one of the audience. I'm a firefighter. I'm a dad. I'm a grandparent. I work work jobs my whole life. You yep. know, they can relate to me, and that's what's important to me. Right. To make right. them laugh. You know. <clears throat> oh, I love when the comics laugh at me, but 
the, I'm an audience comic. Yeah, I hear that you. That makes any yeah. sense. Oh, it makes total sense. You know? Well, all Let, comics should be that way, you know? You, should, you shouldn't be in this to impress the guys in the back room. You should be there to impress the people paying to see Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, and I agree with you, but it's when the, when, if if I'm getting a compliment from a LaRocchia or, or, you know, or Peter Bales, Joey Cole, they're telling me something was killer. You know, I mean, that's. Well, that's different. You're right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and the, I agree. The, the, I'm the laughter speaking, of the audience is huge. I'm speaking but. in the context of like those comics where the audience doesn't laugh, but the comics in the back room are like, <laughs> oh, yeah. and they think they did a good job. Right, you know? right, right. Well, that's like, what that's, I'm saying. The term it, it, it gets diluted when when people with, the, with I've noticed with the new comics the last number of years. Mm -hmm. Um, I I want to book a com what? Keep she's on. she's. I want. Oh, I want a comic like that. Oh. I want a comic like that too. Like that always helps. A comic on my shows I try who is doing it two years and is funny for five minutes. Just yes. give me five funny minutes. Nobody did that for me. <laughs> no I'm she's, Italian. She's causing you trouble. You don't say. Nobody put me in front of an audience like that. You know, firehouse audience, two hundred and fifty right. people. Right. And what I believe in you want to do a guest spot? Yeah. Boom. Here's twenty five dollars for gas. You pay oh, me. Oh, yeah. Forget it. You pay yeah, me. Right. Yeah. You made my show better, right? So I, I believe in that. I believe in. Let that. me let me ask you because you brought up going to Colorado, <clears throat> and the what? All right, let's go. All right. <laughs> I'm here with you. What are we doing? All right. Well, I have a question for him. Mm -hmm. He, um, you posted something just a f just a week or so ago. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Laughter saves lives. Benefit for the Cat Six Foundation yes. raised over two thousand dollars. Two thousand. Well, we well, it was over two thousand. Yes. Yeah. Which is great. Yes. <clears throat> but how do you? So, but then you go to Colorado. I mean, then you got to get your expenses paid. Like, right. So, how do you? And a firehouse isn't charging, say, hundred a hundred dollars a person. So no. how do, how does the foundation make money that way, that way? And well, I'm not looking no. for numbers. I'm no, not, no, no, no. Uh, so I'm not the trying to get to. We have to save foundation. Somebody who mentioned this a few weeks ago. <clears> oh, <throat> one of my new board of directors. He says you're one of the only foundations I know that mostly make money for other individuals and foundations. Mm -hmm. You're not there to make money and and do stuff yourself. You're raising money and giving it to Fight for Firefighters who builds <clears> ramps for homeless and uh, not homeless disabled veterans and their families. General needs. Who, who helps homeless and needy veterans with basic needs. Right. So what we do is we'll run a show. I'll sell my shirts, raffle, or I'll say, here's the price of the show if you'd like to make a donation to Laughter Saves Lives. Now, if we're going to Colorado, they need to get sponsors to cover the cost. Yeah. I was just asked to go to Iowa or Utah. It's the same stuff, same place. <laughs> right? Both it's in like four the letters. It's, it's all, you're not yeah. going to like it. There's no running water. It's in the place. <laughs> yeah. So it's this big fire department thing they're doing right before 9-11. Okay. And somebody at the Cat 6 show, ex-captain, said, you'd be great to MC this event. So I had a meeting with the guy, and I said, listen, I'll MC the event. Let's do a comedy show the night before. All right, John. They're flying me. Pay, all meals. <clears throat> paying for my hotel. Right. We're going to do a comedy night the night before, and they're going to make, a, they, it's a fundraiser for them. They make like $100,000 at the event. Oh, they're wow. going to make a $5,000 donation to Live to Save Lives. So I will come home with, let's just say, $7,000 for Live to Save Lives and not lay out a dime. Okay. Now, all right. I'm not getting paid at all. I'm probably not, I make it an honorarium, they call it, like they'll throw you $1,000 or something. I'm not getting paid at all. But right. you're getting a trip out of the deal. And right, you're, you're not losing you're money. You're fundraising. Are yeah. you kidding me? Right. I am right. going to have a ball. So some of those trips I just go, it's it's a it's a paid vacation, and I'm doing some good deeds. Sure. Deeds okay. Good. All right. Yeah, so Makes that's, sense. That's yeah. cool. That's how I justify my Disney addiction. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I now, bring people with me. Let's, uh, all right, so let's. I feel bad we've been ignoring yes, Johnny a little too. bit. So let's me talk too. to Johnny Come for a second. Us. You're all the way over there. <clears throat> yeah, most very oh, excited please. that you're here, Johnny. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm here today because Johnny is here. Really? I should be at work. Sorry. I should be. <laughs> Technically, wow. I kind of am. This what, is my parking what, what, lot. Can I ask what you do at work? <laughs> Not while we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you later. All right. I appreciate it, though. All right. Johnny, how'd you. Now, you do, uh, you do your comedy, you do impressions. Not during my stand-up act, but I like to do oh, impressions. Oh, just when you call, just when you call here. Yeah, I, I do it to you know <laughs> amuse my friends, or you know I like to make prank calls and do voices. I mean, oh, so you never do it in the act? 
Not really, unless the bit calls for it. You, you ever know. thought about doing doing it in a bit? I've thought about it. I've thought about it, but I'm very simple minded. I, I <laughs> are you doing impressions of people or just impressions people, of like, like an Italian guy? People, or made up characters. You know. Um, May I interrupt? I think that Jim Florentine is come. Isn't he about to do a stint around here? And he is a, a great one with the phone calls, but it's not yeah, part Jim's, of his act. Jim's, a, Jim's amazing. He's but, amazing. But he'll do like scenario phone calls. Like he'll call like if <laughs> like if a tax place is calling to like say uh, he owes this much to the irs when they really doesn't you know he'll fuck with them for a little bit you know or he'll call like cancer centers and really messed up crank well, anchors well, yeah. was an amazing yeah, show yeah, it yeah. cannot yes. be aired today yeah. obviously yeah, but true. Yeah, if true. you could hulu it or youtube <laughs> it or peacock it or cock it, whatever <laughs> p uh <laughs> i've had the pleasure of uh, having jim florentine in here he sat right there and uh, yeah, that was that was, was great. He? He's great. He He's signed. Uh, nice he, I guy. bought a CD from him. I think he, oh, that's nice. how, how that's how long ago this was. <clears throat> right. I bought a CD from him, and he autographed it, <clears throat> Special Ed, yeah. uh, which was a character, not a sped comment. Okay. So let me ask then. What, what's tell me about the wrestling background? Well, uh, that was um, what I did before this. Um, I've always loved it ever since I was a little kid. Um, I can recall being three years old and seeing the King of the Ring finals with like Stone Cold and Jake the Snake Roberts and you know something drawing me to it and Jake the Snake you yeah. just dated yourself <laughs> yeah it showed my age a little bit but uh, <laughs> I'm thinking wow that he was three years old when those guys uh, that's what I'm that's saying that's how too. old I'm feeling because I was already you know an adult at that well, point I'm talking like 97 96 here <laughs> yeah 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 um, I was an adult yeah so you know <laughs> I got the caught the bug around that age and I just really saw myself doing that but I also re recall seeing Stand Up for the first time when I saw the original Last Comic Standing with mm -hmm. Ralphie May, Rich Voss, oh, uh, sure. Jay Moore, and all those guys. And, uh, you know, those were two things that, you know, I've always been crazy about since a young age. But the wrestling bug bit me just a little bit stronger. So I, you know, figured that would be a more pursuable route. Four years in and realizing that... Um, it's a tough gig, right? It is, and the style that I was trained in, you know, I was trained by a guy uh, named Jeff Hahn, who went by the ring name Bad Boy Rocky Shore. He was trained by a gentleman, Chris Adams, at the World Class Academy down in Dallas, Texas, at this place called the Sportatorium. And they're responsible for a lot of legendary talents, Stone Cold, the Freebirds, uh, the, the Von Erics, all those guys. So the style that I was trained was very old school, very much storytelling based, very... Uh, you know, not so much the flippy dippy shit you see today when you watch wrestling, but <laughs> flippy more dippy shit like a cheerleading competition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're yeah. gonna go to nationals. Yeah, you, you, you turn on wrestling today, it looks like a gymnastics recital. See? You know? <laughs> I was taught more, you know, the storytelling basics. You know, to make it look like a real life action movie. You know, okay, mm -hmm. to where everything you saw made sense. Mm. You know, and. The more I progressed into my run, the more the business was starting to change. And it went, I would go from hearing guys like Jeff tell me, John, you're a big guy, Stay, stick to more to your ground game and focus more on the psychology. I would go from that, hearing that, to hearing, hey, John, you're a big guy, do a backflip every once in a while. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> you know? But on top of that, it's so very, no backflips today? You're not no, going to no, do no, one for us? No. No. I, I do. That's why she came. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, it's also very close-minded. It's very, um, you know, and I've said this millions of times in other interviews, all forms of entertainment can be cutthroat, but wrestling is at the top of the heat, you know, because... Um, oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen guys go off script and fight each other for real over the dumbest stuff. No kidding. I've seen drugs snuck into the dressing room. I've seen guys... Because none of those things go on around, you know, in the comedy world. <laughs> Wait, what? there's drugs here? <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. Well... You know, I'm not going to dive deep into the shit that I've seen. May but, I uh, just interrupt for half a second? Sure, in sure. your introduction to this, you explained that there was, uh, you know, the training and the schools and stuff yes. like that. I was actually a little surprised by that because, like, I think of, like, professional ballet companies mm -hmm. having their conservatories and mm -hmm. their studios. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why. I never... I kind of figured it was something that, like, I don't know, you're doing, like, a high school gym or something to practice. I didn't, not not to disrespect mm -hmm. it, I didn't realize, though, how um, incom how complicated this mm -hmm. is. But now that you're saying it, it I absolutely think, makes sense. Yeah. 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 You guys, I mean, I when you watch wrestling, 
you're like, how are they doing that and not mm-hmm. killing each other? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, not hurting. I mean, sometimes, obviously, you do get hurt. Mm-hmm. But that's always, I, I go back to Ivan Putski and Bruno Sammartino. Yep. Yep. I used to go to Madison yep. Square Garden when I was a kid with my cousin. Yep. And then we'd come out, we'd be wrestling. <laughs> you know. Oh, that was, those are good memories. Those yeah. are good memories. Those guys come from that style <laughs> that I was used to. Yes. Just the storytelling. <clears throat> yep, the, yep. You know, right. the, the less is more. Mm-hmm. You know, pace yourself. You know, you turn on shows like AEW Wrestling Now, it's like they're trying to do a million things for yeah. the sake of making the audience go crazy <clears throat> yeah. instead of the How about The Rock? Where would you put him in there? Oh, I love The Rock. The Rock's one of my yeah, heroes. he was fun. Yeah, too. I love The Rock. Yeah. yeah. The Rock. So, so you're all about the art. You were, the like, art, yes. But so you weren't concerned, because you, if I'm not mistaken, you kind of, you kind of got to a certain level, didn't you? I was signed with, well, I wouldn't necessarily say signed, but I was a part of the biggest independent promotion on Long Island, the New York Wrestling Connection. Okay. I was there for about eight months, and that's when shit started really turning downhill. I became extremely paranoid. I was developing somewhat of a drinking problem. No kidding. I became miserable to do anything wrestling-related because I saw the, the, the shift it was taking and not only that, but I was with a company before that where I was, you know, main event, where I worked up my way up and I, and I main evented shows. I was selling, you know, merchandise. I was becoming a valued name on that promotion. All I did was go from one promotion to another, and it's like all the work I did became non existent. Why'd you leave? Wow. Oh, I, <laughs> I, don't know. I switched promotions for better opportunity. Okay. You know, but it was like once I switched, it seemed like all the work I did became non existent, yeah. which made me miserable and it was sure. a plethora it was a plethora of other things and i just you know for the sake of my set you know, okay bye <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, i'm in charge <laughs> keep, keep talking, keep talking. Okay. For, <laughs> this is the most show <laughs> this camera cut out that's it oh my god I can't but you still you're on another camera all right you're cool good. you're good, you're good. No, for the sake of my sanity i had to leave you know and, and it took me a while to really learn to enjoy it again as a as a viewer and um, I still love it. I acknowledge that it's a part of my history. That's why you'll still see some references of my sure. past run every yeah. now and then. But, um, but yeah, you know, I can say that as proud as I am of my past experience, I will not, I will not survive in today's pro wrestling product. So I had to move on. But um, like I mentioned earlier, comedy was a love too. And after a while of being away from doing live shows, I began to miss the feeling of performing in front of a live audience because you can attest to this. There's nothing like it. Absolutely. There's nothing like performing yep. in front of a crowd. Absolutely right. So it was 2019. I basically said to myself, I'm not getting any younger. I tried out in a amateur night at McGuire's and I've been doing it at my own pace ever since. Cool. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. That is great. Yeah, that's great. I just know when I started doing this a couple of years ago, you were absolutely one of the friendliest and most welcoming kind faces. Thank you. It's terrifying to go out with you people the first couple of times. You people. You people. What people? Where did we officially meet, me and you, the first time? Because I don't remember. I'm going to guess it was at that brewery out She's in kissing Shore. your ass. You don't even remember meeting her. Uh, not <laughs> Oh I didn't life. remember meeting you, <laughs> so don't feel that bad. <laughs> um, no, I believe it was at the uh, brewery out in um, Bayshore. It's not there anymore, mm-hmm. but you came and you were just like, just the nicest guy ever. And you came up to me and you're like, oh my God, you're funny. And I'm like, thank God somebody said something nice to me because I am not funny. <laughs> well, let's get down to the, you know, to the brass tacks here. You said something about, or actually I said something about you coming in the other day when Mo was here, and you said something about wrestling and body slamming. Uh, I did Mo, not say, I Yes, didn't, you did. No, I did not. And then Mo said she wanted to be body slammed by you. No, nah, no, no. Damn it, you remembered that. Of course. The, I, that's hey, I, don't, I don't need Annalise Santusis hunting me down and <laughs> cutting my neck. So. She can run you down now. Did yeah. you see she's up to like a seven-minute mile? Yeah. <laughs> she can go she bicycling down. Yeah, she yeah. Can she's me. doing uh, the uh, whatever the borough thing is with the yeah, bike, the 50-miler. I should, I should do that. I really should do so that. So hook up with her and make it happen. Yeah, it. When, you know what it is? I'm not in it. Do I look like I ride a bicycle? <laughs> I don't ride a bike enough either. That's what I'm worried about. i got to get in better shape to do that. So talk to Emily. <clears throat> got to get in better shape. You're going to be 64 this weekend. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, I honestly, you do. You're in better shape than me. I'm 10 years behind you. Mm-hmm. Well, you, uh, you know, I have two grandchildren that I watch two days a week. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that'll keep Tuesday, you on your he's off from school a six-year-old this week. Yes. You can't <clears throat> tell me the day before, oh, by the way, you have to watch him all day. 
Mm. That's a three-day preparation to watch a six-year-old. <laughs> it, you got to eat right. You got to get your sleep right. You got to yep. stretch. You got to stock up on the snacks. Yep. So I had the two of them because my wife is not feeling great. So Tuesday morning, got her out of bed, the little one, one-and-a-half-year-old, fed her, got her all settled, took a walk with both of them, threw her in for a nap, took him to Dave & Buster's. Nice. It was so crowded. We walked in. He walked out. It was so crowded. Wow. Then I said to him, let me let's go out to eat to a nice restaurant to a six year old. That's friendly, you know. Yeah, but absolutely. it's a good grand. Yeah, he calls me Grand Babs because I don't want to call <coughs> grand, grand Bar. It sounds like Grand a, Babs, Grand Babs, Grand Babs. My kids call me Babs for some reason, so I said that's what I want to be called. I love that. Grand, grand Babs. Babs. Grand Babs. So he says, Grand Babs. <laughs> I know where we can go. I go where Stu Leonard's. Nice. I used to go there all the time when they press the buttons and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We here's what he eats for lunch. A slice of pizza and takes the cheese off. Uh, am I right? Uh, that's not a. I'm looking around so nobody sees this. The grand dad thinks, Shh, quiet! <laughs> quiet! Then I, take the, I took a little too much of the bread off. He's wigging out. Then the next day he says to his mother, and this was the family thread, thread uh, Vincent, that's my grandson's name, Vincent, I call him the goose. The goose. Vincent With Maverick? said, Grand Babs taught him a new name. For his butt. I go, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I am in trouble. And I'm looking, I'm going, is he going to say? And, he, and she says, rear end. Like, oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Throw him five bucks. Thanks, yeah, Vincent. Thank God. So, you uh, saved me. Yeah, he's a, he's a good kid. He's exhausting. Yeah, he's six year old. Well, and, yeah. And, and at my age, like when you were younger and you had kids, like my when I was in my 30s, I had kids a little late, but in my 30s, you can run around with them all day. <clears throat> right. I can't, I can't do that unless I'm prepared. I uh, I could never. I've been, I've been saying that since I, I was like 40. <laughs> I can't have kids now. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would be insane. One day at time <clears throat> school, we're at the playground. <clears throat> kids are playing, all <clears throat> his friends. <clears throat> and he stops. And he looks at me and he says to his friends, My grandbabs was a New York City firefighter. Nice. And Aww. the kids go, Ooh. And he goes, but now he's old. <laughs> Come here, kid. Get over here. Come here, Goose. Grandbabs. I believe that's what Barbara Streisand's kids, uh, grandkids call her, too. <laughs> Grandbabs. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Oh, but it's the best. I live right <clears throat> down the block. Right oh, that's down the nice. Block. You, know, so, so, you know, my daughter-in-law is a saint because she said, we're going to buy this house on the same block I live. Wow. Yeah, a few houses. <clears throat> the daughter-in-law. My do- well, it says a lot about her. Yeah. Now, my, my son, uh, but my daughter-in-law, to be down the block from me. So when they start having the kids, I'm up there kissing them, banana playing. So my son says, hey, Dad, you know, you look too much like Ray Romano, you know, stuff here. <laughs> like, oh, you yeah. come over every day, like, you know, Ray Romano's mom did, right? You come Raven, over every Raven, day. Raven. You don't call. You don't knock. I bet you Raymond had a sandwich today. Before you come over. Call. I'm not going to do that, bro. That's what I call him, bro. I'm going to do that, bro. Bro. Raymond, Raymond. Bruh. I go, hey, bro. Bruh. Can I come over and see the kids? Right, so then he's getting like eight calls, old calls a day. My hand was on the doorknob. (laughs) Yeah, can I? Boom, I'm in there. He goes, that's not what I meant. (laughs) Oh, it's the best, though. I'm very lucky. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, that's cool. You really get compared to Ray Romano? Oh, Ray Romano, Jim Valvano, Andy Garcia. Andy Garcia, I see, I was yes. I by the fire department doctor when I went down for a medical lunch. He goes, you know who you look like? I go, here we go. Yep. I go, who? He goes, an out of shape Andy Garcia. I go, shut up and do your job. You're, out of shape. Andy you're Garcia. in better shape than Andy Garcia. He's, I was chubby back then, chubby, though. I was. Yeah? I was. Yeah. Andy Garcia, I've told this story before. Um, I, was, I was working in Scotland once okay. <clears throat> and um uh, my my buddy was um it was it was it was um saint uh saint I, with a big golf at saint andrews oh, okay, I, okay, where okay. the big golf thing is every right, 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 right. and <clears throat> it was a big charity event these big name golfers were there but i don't follow golf for shit so i had no idea who anybody was right. but my buddy was um the 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 leader of the house band that was performing with this fundraiser huey lewis was there and um um, Mike Rutherford from Mike and Mechanics and Genesis, um, and Andy Garcia. They have uh, bongo set up for him. <clears throat> he walks in. Uh, I'm telling you, I think he was already half in the bag when he got there. 
He walks in. He's he, and he is. He's dumpy. He, he's, uh-huh. he's overweight, and he had this fedora and this overcoat on. People didn't even know it was him. He just kind of and he takes off the coat. He actually puts the coat on the bongos and then just sits there and just starts. The, you know, this is for rehearsal, and that you know people start looking over. Oh, Andy's here, and they go over and start talking to him. So the event is going on, and and at this point it's like two in the morning, and you know it's it's loosening up. People are leaving. And that's what I figure. At this point, all the professionalism's gone. I can take a get a picture. So uh, Sally was with me, and it was him, and he was talking to um, Bon Jovi's drummer. He was also there. Tico Torres is his name. He, and the two of them were talking. So we say, "Hey, you mind? Can we get a picture?" We take the we take the selfie. It was Tico Torres, Andy Garcia, Sally, and then me. I'm holding the phone. Boom. We take the picture. Sally turns to Andy. So it's just like this. She turns mm-hmm. to her left. She thanks him. She goes. Thank you, uh, Andy, for the picture. He goes, you're welcome. I swear to, I swear to you. Just like, I mean, it was just so blatant. You're welcome. <laughs> it wasn't It wasn't like, you know, like he touched her elbow and just like, he just. <laughs> to tell you, that's why I switched seats, though, just to let you know. <laughs> you didn't see what he was doing when his hands weren't <laughs> above the counter. By the way, Jeff Bosey says hello to you. Oh, hi, Jeff Bosey. Hello, Jeff Bosey. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she, so, he, and he walks away. So I turn to her, I go. Did he just touch your tit? And she goes, uh, she goes, yeah. She goes, I. What did she say? I feel so good about. Or, or it was fine because it was Andy Garcia yeah, or something Garcia. like that. <laughs> like, holy shit! How weird is that? <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, You're a big enough name, you can get away with it. Right. You I, need to tell me that if Scarlett Johansson was to walk in here and grab your pe- your butt, you'd have an issue with uh, it. Uh, that's uh, we're guys. We're pigs. Yeah, that's yeah. No, I get it. You just want a place to stick your dick. I get it, but. I mean, I mean not, even, not even that we're, that, that we're people, yeah, the grab but, and but I think we're joking, but I'm saying it's different for a, a woman to do it to a man, I think, than yeah. for a man to do it to a woman. Yeah. Yeah. It just is. I, well, I don't know if that sounds who gets a, it, uh, you know, um, sexist or something. Sexist, yeah. maybe it does. I'm sorry if it does. No, 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 no that's fine. But, uh, do you... Uh, well, who who's your celebrity pass? Who who would you allow to touch your right, boob right. like that? Like Andy Garcia? Who would I love to? T- who what celebrity would I allow or, to touch my boob? Or do you do, you, do um. you not? Maybe you don't have one. Oh, which I, is fine. I have one. I have one. Emily Santos. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Good, good answer. answer. Good answer. You know that's actually a good a good segue because uh, I was reading an article and I wanted to get your your guys' opinion. There's a um, was it was it you were telling me about this show called You? Yes. All right, well, I just read an article. There's a guy on that show. His name is Penn Bagley. He's Bagley. Was it? Ba- Bagley, I think. Bagley. Oh, okay. He was also on Gossip Girls. For the apparently. record, I've never heard he of He was in the show. movie John I never Tucker heard of it either. Until, yeah. yeah. So earlier this week, he uh, said he no longer wants to do sex scenes on the show. Okay. Is there a lot of sex scenes on the show? I've never seen it. He's he's a stalker. He's, yeah, he, he stalker? sleeps with oh, okay. <laughs> he no longer wants to do sex scenes. Um... Uh, so yeah, he, um, apparently it's, it's like a big deal. Uh, apparently a lot of actors have been, um, uncomfortable with sex scenes or love scenes, I should say. Mm-hmm. I would feel that way <clears throat> if I had a high definition camera looking at my naked body constantly. Yeah. Or you'd go home and count the money you get for being on a high def Netflix show. You can go on to Pornhub and see Bush for free. Nobody needs to pay me to see mine. We'll go in a commercial now. <laughs> um, you know, this I, I episode took, sponsored by Adam and Eve. My porn up video. What's that? The quickest I ever. took in a, 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 a commercial. No, was it was it commercial? It was an acting class. Yeah. If I said the if I said the teacher, a lot of people, a lot of comics are taking this class. So I'm taking the class, and there's a, a very attractive a young lady in the class who is a uh, was she was she a dancer or not? Very attractive young lady, and a few other a few other people, or whatever. So. Every, it happened every week. We would improv a scene. So the teacher would say, okay. She would turn to this girl, whoever her partner was, and say, okay, you uh, haven't seen your boyfriend in, in years. He thought he was taken away, and he's walking in the door, and you're seeing for the first time in 15 years. Boom! Hugging, kissing. Well, oh, yeah. Right? And then here's the scenes that she gave me every time. She'd go, all right, John, <laughs> Susie, you haven't seen Susie and she has a younger sister, and you had molested her, and she's seen you for the first time. Go! Smack! <laughs> Every time going, could you give me just one nice scene, one a little, with a little hug and whatever. Every this is just goes, a handshake instead of a smack. Smacked. Every week, you know? 
as a girl who does improv, I mm. very much try to avoid any of those standard romantic mm -hmm. roles. Mm -hmm. I also try to avoid the little girl stuff just because it's, you know, you can't sure. do too, too much with it. Because sure. if you start to go psycho, then you're not believable. Mm. But mm. Um, I, I, if you throw me up there and if you just give me a location, I'm going to be anything but the sweetheart of that scene. Right. right. <laughs> Uh, but now, so yeah, apparently this is a big deal. A lot of actors have expressed how uncomfortable they are. Um, so now, apparently a lot of the, and this is the job I want, apparently a lot of film and movie sets and TV sets have what they call intimacy coordinators. These are people whose job it is to make sure everyone is comfortable with what's being filmed and how it's being acted out. How about stuntmen? A stunt, a stunt cock. So, well, well, <laughs> It could be just a. a <laughs> <laughs> what Hello. Is, is intimacy. What's, what's the term? Intimacy what? Intimacy coordinators. You sure that's not a new word to say fluffer? <laughs> yeah, right. I thought you meant like somebody who fills in for them like a stuntman. Well, uh, the, wasn't that an episode of Friends where Joey was, was Al Pacino's butt? I, I, yes. Yeah, I think oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's. it's there. Yeah, they. Uh... Look, my ass talks. Who <laughs> 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 There, there it is. He's good. When it's you good know attention. it as long as me, I call it, you know. You know every episode? My, I know my son knows every episode. What, of a Friends? Friends? That was really? a, um, <coughs> what was it, the Chris O'Donnell movie with him. Uh, uh, oh, my God. Why Sent did I? Sent Woman. What? Oh, Sent a Woman, Woman, yeah. That's oh, it. That's yeah. it. That's what it. That's it. Movie. And yeah. Joey, if you're out there, fuck you two. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. Can you do Al Pacino as Michael Corleone? <clears throat> No, no. Um, the only I can do is the older one where he's more... Uh, yeah, the raspiness yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that shit. Mm. Who's, uh, who's that out there? Didn't... I don't know. There used to be know. a... Somebody just walked in. Do you want me to go find out? Yeah, I think we <laughs> might have to. Come here. <laughs> who's that? Come on in. I don't know. He just walked into the back. Come on in. I'm cute. You want to come in here. Hi. Like Hi, how are you? Are you, who you? are you looking for somebody? Yeah, I know the, the guy for the... Oh, all right. All right, you guys uh, talk to us. Okay. Oh, I got notes now. All right, we're just going to go through the pages and figure it out. Oh, what the hell? Somebody say stop. What are you doing? No, I don't want to read that. Am I allowed to mention my website? Because I haven't done that yet. I have no idea. LaughterSavesLives.org. You know, no one would have put that together for you. What's that? LaughterSavesLives.org. I don't org. think anyone would have put that together for you. You seem like a dot com. No, I don't, I don't know why we use dot org. Is there, is there times where you use dot org or dot com? I, I, Organization? I don't know. I use dot gov. I would assume dot org would be more for like the government sites, like the White House. No, that's dot gov. That's oh, that's dot gov. gov. That's dot gov. What the hell do I know? <laughs> I mean, a lot of organizations use dot org. Okay. So well, if anybody org. out there is in the Riverhead area yes. and shops at the Tanger Outlets, yes. stop by Pepper Palace. That's my friend Barbara's store. She's the head manager. They got handcrafted uh, spicy... Um, Hot sauces of all different flavors nice. and different eccentric brands. I'll have to go. I yeah. love spicy. Oh, you'll you'll love the store. I right? was on a wall of flame. Really? Yes. That means that has two meanings. Well, no, not because I'm a ginger Johnny. <laughs> uh, no, I I did a hot wing contest where I ate you know ten wings in forty five minutes. That yeah. let's just put it this way. Um, that, and I'm used to this. Pepperpalace.com. Right, continue. No, 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 no problem. Right. Um, and there was a solid six hours the next day that I couldn't sit down. But it was worth it. You know, I had my picture up someplace, so it was pretty good. I would like to go to this Pepper Palace with you. Now, Pepper Palace Ooh. just sells hot stuff? or They, they, they sell food. hot sauces. They sell uh, beef jerky. That, oh, uh, yeah, okay, so it's uh, not like a restaurant. No, it's a, oh. it's a, it's a store. Right, know, right. Yeah, yeah. They got mild stuff, which is what I go for because I can be I'm a bit a of a Frank's guy I mean I'm a yeah. basic Frank's guy uh, you know but then they got what's like the, the the extreme stuff you yeah. know that really burns your uh, mouth up like Butera did a show that was part of a hot wings contest oh yeah well and I oh yeah at that at Red Zone I was a, I, I yeah. originally told him I'd be on it but then when I had all my medical stuff it was like I don't want to risk this because God yeah. forbid you know and speaking of Butera oh. hang on one second this Saturday. Bye, new friend. Bye, new friend. This Saturday, <laughs> catch me at Farrell's uh, in Rancacama. 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 I'll be at Farrell's. I did yeah. a bad job. I almost set the studio on fire. Oh, really? Yeah. What'd you do? I farted. You 
farted? I did. I totally farted. That's awesome. Did you really? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm a girl. I'd be I mad. Don't do I'd, that. I'd be mad that I missed that. That yeah. I farted? <coughs> yeah. No, this relationship just went to a whole all, new level. All women Tony. say they don't fart. They're all lying. Absolutely, they're, they're lying. lying. My mother used to say that. John, I don't fart. I puff. Two seconds later, it sounded like a rocket shooting out of her asshole. <laughs> there is nothing that says I love you. I love you more man. than if being you able to Dutch fart. Oven? Oh, okay. No, no, just being able to fart in front of somebody. To be that comfortable to fart in front of them, that means you really love them. Mo, do you and Emily have a little? Uh, do we toot? Yeah. Do we toot? My goodness. Perhaps one of us toots more than the other. Do one of you do the pull my finger thing? Maybe once. <laughs> remember when I did that to the camera girl at the movie at the movie shoot? Tony, you don't remember that? <clears throat> oh yes, yeah. oh, of course I do. <laughs> of course I do. I do that to my kids though. Yeah. <laughs> I, w- I went up to her at the premiere. I said, "Do I look familiar?" She said, "No." I'm like, "How about now?" And I hold the <laughs> finger up like this. She goes, "Oh, you're the creep." I'm like, "Yep." <laughs> <laughs> yep. Johnny was uh, yeah. Johnny was a part of uh, the movie Comic Sans that we made with Don Sill here. I was one of the extras in the show scene. Yeah, that, that was cool. It was, a, it was a good movie. Yeah, yeah we it, were it at came the out premiere. Well. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Yeah. it, it we we'll have to premiere. get you. Huh? It's YouTube. It, you said what? Carrie Caravis before she's Carrie's in it. Joey yeah. Cole is in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, Jeff, it was a great movie. Jeff Bosey's in it. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was good. And I meant to see it. I meant to yeah. Well, you could have hung out with all of us and had yeah. a great time. I would. Lo- I don't hang out that much. You sure? don't hang out. You're not a big hanger outer. You know, th- th- yeah, and and over the years, I've never been. I've always been. Let me get home to you know, my wife or my family. I'm not. But, you know, and I think that has hurt me over the years in a way. You know, because I'm not part of the group. Mm. You know what I mean? I wasn't. Didn't get to know people. A lot of people in that way. <coughs> well, you no. know. I like to think of myself as more of a satellite. You know, like it's just I'm there, I'm there, I'm I'm, I'm here, I'm present. But this, is, I, unfortunately, I can't make this my life. Right. Yeah, I hear you. So <laughs> while I have, you know, just, I have a great time with everyone, and I just I love the friendships that we're making here in this, and I wish I could do more of it. Espe- but I have, especially my friendship with you. Of course. Are we getting any kind of wrestle wrestling involved with you two today or no? Oh no. No. Uh, Damn it. No. I think oh, she's mis- I have a, I have an idea. Well, uh, okay. I have an idea. Uh-oh. Can I? Uh-oh. What, what, Uh-oh. What, 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 what? Or I have to walk in front of the counter and then they'll see my face. Well, what are you? I'm getting nervous. What are you doing? Ready? Oh. <laughs> oh, they're going to thumb Five, wrestle? Two, thumb three, wrestling. Four, I declare a thumb war. Uh, Look how tiny that before. <laughs> uh, you can't uh, That's uh, not how you do a thumb wrestle. You can't What the hell is going on over there? You know, like I said, I'm ADD, but I heard it, I, I, I heard something good from a veteran the other day. Yeah. That has you know, to do with ADD. You talk to a veteran oh. and you say thank you for your service. <clears throat> yes. Some of them are a little uncomfortable. A lot of them are you know, uncomfortable with that, yeah. Some, you know, well, I, I, there was a veteran at a show in Jersey, Newark, New Jersey, we did. We only had about 25 people there. Um, and what's great about those shows is the comics give it their all. Mm. 25, mm-hmm. 250. And we reached yes. Walker with me and uh, drove to Newark. And um, I said to the guy, "Yo, oh, you were very thank you for your service." And he came back and he goes, "Thank you for your support." And I go, "That is freaking awesome." Mm-hmm. He goes, yeah. "I heard it from another veteran, and I took it for my own." So I went right back to my dad the next time I saw him because he's always wearing his hat, and, you know. And I said, "Dad, if somebody says thank you for your service, what do you say?" He goes, "Well, I say this." I said, "I go, thank you for your support." Nice. You know. <clears throat> do you get Do you get a lot of that too with being a fireman? I, I do, I do. Um, you know, I, I I joke about it now on stage. I always am wearing fire department stuff too much, and I always say on stage, "You go, yeah, that's how we get free stuff." <laughs> you're, re- you're representing your history, but right. I am very proud. I'd be proud especially too, especially yeah. because of nine eleven of the mm. guys that I worked with. I mean, you know, and people look at nine eleven, they look at firefighters, and they're like, "Oh my God, these guys mm-hmm. are heroes." Yep, they were dads. They were soccer coaches. They were teachers on the side they were you and me you know and and they were my friends and these are guys that i partied with picnics christmas parties softball so if i don't remember them who is going to mm. if i'm not mentioning their name i always close not if i'm doing a long set i'll close my set with the joke that tommy gardner wrote for me and his wife actually was on my show last night liz gardner who is a art therapist now because she saw the good that our therapy did for her kids after 9-11. Right. She went back to school. Great story, right? Great yeah. story. So Tommy, I, I had this joke. I talk about my wife's large breasts and how hard it is to buy a bra 
you know, she, whatever. And I say, um, I say, she's wearing shoulder pads now because she wears shoulder pads so people won't notice her breasts as much because mm. the shoulder pads. And I said, honey, that's not going to work. I think what you should put on your shoulders is two flaming, juggling chickens. Maybe that would work better. You know, Tommy wrote that punchline for me in the firehouse, <laughs> and I will tell that joke until the day I die as a way. And then after yeah. I tell it, I go, that joke was written by Tom Gardner. We lost him on 9-11. Let's hear it for Tom Gardner here. People go yeah. crazy. You know, stand up. <coughs> and then I'll go, and I feel him on stage. Every time I'm on stage, I feel him talking to me. Tonight, mm. he's saying... You're working with Rich Walker in the back of an Italian-American association. You still suck. <laughs> Get a laugh in Tommy's memory. You know what I mean? I don't yep. beat him over the head with 9-11. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to sit there. Right. Yeah, you can't. Right. And, I mean, the first time I did one of the shows on the road, we were in Ohio. Yeah. Local hospital. And, and you say, how did you cut? I took a hit on, on this. When I went out there, all right? I right, for, right. Because I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Got on stage. We were raising money for a burn center. Have the Laugh That Saves Lives backdrop behind me for the first time. Okay. I get on stage and I said, this gentleman we're here tonight is a way to remember my guys. I start bawling. Oh, I wow. I crying because I, I did it. I wanted to put this together. Here I am <clears throat> in, yeah. in, you know, in front of a group of people remembering my guys. And I go, let's start the show. Here's your MC. <laughs> wow. I, up the stage. Mm -hmm. I brought up mm -hmm. the MC, then I came back later. I like to separate. Here I am, president of the Lamp to Save Lives Foundation. Here's your MC, and then come back two comics later and be John the comic now. Right. You know, because I can yeah, take sure. a deep breath and, and come out <clears throat> as the comic and attack. And then know? do you come back two comics later as Batman? No. <laughs> I think your no. show would be a lot more interesting no. if you did. But it is, it is, it is nice <clears throat> when people say, Sometimes they will say, I thank you for your service or whatever. Yeah. Here's something really cool. I have a screenplay. I, let's say it's in development. It's been in development for years, but I just looked up with a new producer, new writer out in L.A. So let's see. In fact, I'm supposed to return an email about uh, the next meeting. So um, in the screenplay, there's a scene, my favorite scene. Now, we got them laughing in the screenplay. We got them crying about laughter saves lives. And right. How you get laughter and, and develop a foundation based on laughter from nine, what, what, what's that all about, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we take the, through the whole story, how I got on the job and 9-11 or what it was, and there's a scene where my uncle had, dies a year after 9-11. And we go to Connecticut to his funeral, it's snowing out, we're at the wake, and my uncle was in the military, my dad was in the military. So one of my uncle's old war buddies looks at me and says, uh, no, my dad says to him, hey, Tomorrow when we salute Joe goodbye at the grave, can my son join us? He's a, he's a New York City firefighter. I go, Dad, I don't belong with you guys. You went right. away for your country. You left <clears> your <throat> families. No, I don't feel comfortable doing that. This freaking guy turns to me. I mean, you're talking about a millet, right? He goes, son. Now I'm like, how old was I? I don't know, 20 years ago. So I was in my foot. Son, you're a New York City firefighter? Yes, sir. He goes, you're going to salute with your father? To salute your uncle goodbye at that cemetery. You're going to stand next to us. Wow. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I got to stand <clears throat> next to my dad and be one of them for the only time in my life. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm not a military. But that would that scare the shit out of me. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm not saluting, saluting right or something. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Because, I, 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 I mean, I learned on the job how to salute, but I, mm. I went over that with him. You know, <clears throat> I, oh, absolutely. I wanted, and I wanted to do it right. Right. But to be standing there for that few minutes next to my dad mm -hmm. and be included by this man right, who right. was a, as one of them. Wow. It blew me away. It blew me away. Do you um do you ever work with Bobby Sen at all? Do you, you must. You? Bobby Sen? You don't know Bobby? I know the name. He's a he was uh, he was a fireman. He was in both buildings when they came down. Yeah, I know the name. And he's he's He does a lot of uh he's not a comedian, but he oh. does a lot of uh He produces uh, no. No, he's not involved in comedy at all, but Look me up. Yeah, that, yeah, I will. I, I he he does a lot of fire uh <laughs> He's involved with charity events and whatnot for 9-11 firemen and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, I'll definitely hook you up. We're also working uh, Laugh to Save Lives on a docuseries okay. <clears throat> based on what we do. We, we, we're doing the Knights of Columbus Halls, the VFWs, salt of the earth people are out supporting their community. Yeah. We're coming in doing a comedy show, raising money, whatever. So they wanted, they're pitching it over the next week or two. Another production company, you know Mary Kennedy? 
out of LA. She was. I shameless. know who she is. Okay, she, yeah. they have their own production company, so Mary's company's taking the lead on this for me. And um, she said, you know what? They need something up front, a minute that's kind of funny, right? But kind of says <clears> a little bit <throat> what Laugh to Saves Lives is. So I got Frank Fiala. Yep. Okay, my buddy. Love Frank. Frank. Okay. So we went. I, I got my buddies from the North Merrick Fire Department, and. I'm looking, I'm standing out front of the firehouse and I'm looking in the window. And Frank goes, comes up, hey Johnny! I'm like, Frankie, how you doing? He goes, well, now I'm carrying an axe and I got on a fire department hat, fire department, you know. So he goes, why, why are we meeting in front of the firehouse? I go, well, Frankie, I go, I miss being a firefighter. He goes, no kidding, you got the hat, the jacket, you're looking in the firehouse, you're carrying a friggin' axe! I go, I guess a bit overkill, right? He goes, yeah, it's a little much. <laughs> so I'll try to tone it down. I said, listen, we're doing a fundraiser for general needs. They help homeless and needy veterans. You want to be on the show, Frank? Sure, Johnny. Great. He goes, let's go to the diner. You want to go to the diner for lunch? Oh, yeah, I'll meet you. I'll go. So he goes, come on, I'll give you a ride. I go, no, I got a ride. The fire truck pulls up. <laughs> I hop on the fire truck, right? They go, beep, beep. I said, I'll meet you there. But the whole time, like, when I'm talking to him, the axe is, like, going this. Right, right, right yeah. It was, per- it was a little minute. It was a minute. But they loved it. They it's loved tough it. to put a. It's tough to put a minute. Yeah. Together, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Frank Fiala, I'm just love Frank, but I'm sick of him because he was, you know, every in between every inning in the Met game, you know, you, you'd see his face in those damn yeah, commercials. commercials. I got and sick of seeing him for crying out loud. Yeah. <clears throat> John LaRocchia, Hart, uh, Long Beach, P- PL. Oh, Public Library. Sorry, it's Jules. I didn't look to see who wrote this. Jules? Hey, You're guys. doing Jules show at pub in Long Beach in May. Is that what's going on here? I, I guess I am. I guess I am. Yeah, she said pub, Long Beach Public Library on 518. 518, Jules, I'm just going to make sure I got on my calendar because I'm still not. You know <laughs> Good thing I read it because... That's the day before I'm my birthday, Jules. Idiot, Jules. That's the day before your birthday? That is Thank the day you, before my birthday. Thank you, Jules. Yeah. Let me see. While, while we're talking, I'm going to look it up because... A volcano erupted and I was born. <laughs> <laughs> May 18th, 1980, oh, yeah. Mount St. Helens erupted. Oh, really? Is that right? A few hours later. Wow. May 18th. Hmm? Comedy, Long Beach Library. It's on it. Got it. There you go. 1980. No, you're not 1980. <coughs> Thank you, Jules. 93. Yeah. Oh, I was in like middle school. I was almost going into high school. <coughs> you're hitting the big 3 0 this year? Yes, sir. He's wow. a baby. He is a baby. He is a baby. Holy a baby. crap. I can finally <coughs> say that because I'm not the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> Every other thing I do, I'm the youngest still. She's 30 years old. Oh, my right. goodness. You have no problem with him being 30, but you don't say anything about me turning 29? Like, really? Fine. <laughs> Thank you for getting that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. Seriously. Uh, this is, I've been listening to just everything that you've been saying, and what a tremendous example for how if you're able to just to combine and to take something that is so dark and so such a scar i think on my identity as like a new yorker just as being a new yorker it's such a scar on it but then you are turning around and completely are benefiting from it and not for personal gain as was said before you know it's 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 therapy for me how do you go to work on the next day and lose a third of the people you worked with. They're not there. How do you deal with that? I don't know. I don't know how to deal with that. I was lucky enough that I was able to share feelings. I was involved with an organization called Retrovi, okay. which is like as an offshoot of Marriage Encounter. Mm-hmm. Marriages with problems. Like if you go on Marriage Encounter, everybody is lovey-lovey. They want to enhance their marriage. Mm-hmm. When you go on Retro, and then if I went, uh, let's say there was... A, a problem in our marriage with abuse or drugs. But you go on these weekends in marriage, you feel out of place. Everybody's lovey-dovey. They get a little great. You want to kill each other, right? So Retrovi is all marriages with problems. And it was three couples and a priest run by the Catholic Church. You go away for a whole weekend, share your feelings. So I w- then they made us one of the couples, my wife and I, because we they, they appreciated how open we were or whatever. So we did that for ye- a few years. So after 9-11, when they had therapists coming to the... We had a therapist every day come to the firehouse. Yeah. Guys, you know, guys, they don't want to talk. Right. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. Especially know? firemen, I would think, because you, know, you guys are tough and Absolutely, manly. Yeah. yeah. And I was very <clears throat> comfortable sharing feelings. So I would try to get the guys to come into the meeting. And the therapist, who just connected with me, again, I haven't spoken to him in 20 years, this guy, for different reasons. He connected, um, and I was still going to therapy as of six months ago, and I'll probably continue. Yeah. Um, he... Um, 
he came to me and he goes, how do I get these guys in a, in a group session? Mm. I said, because you're trying too hard. Mm -hmm. I go, come in the kitchen, <clears throat> bring a box of donuts, mm -hmm. and talk Mets, and talk Yankees, talk football. So he, that's what he started doing. He started coming for breakfast every day. Blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, hey, I'm going to hold this little session. But guys would start to trickle in. Mm -hmm. you know. Um, but mm. it, that's, that's interesting. That's, the comedy <clears throat> is my therapy. You know, and, and, and doing good work, so to speak. I, I always tell it to my kids, it feels good. There is nothing like donating your time. You only have so much time. We all can write out checks. I have a ton of bills. My wife is always, I got to hide these freaking things that come in the mail. She's always sending out checks mm -hmm. and everything. But to go to the veterans hospital to, like we did the Cat 6 show, yep. that mother, that child is nonverbal, her child, and very hyper. Mm. I got a grandson in the same school who's perfectly healthy. So I said to her, let's do a comedy show. She goes, John, she goes, I got too much going on. I go, no, you're going to come. Sit, right, laugh, sit and enjoy. And I'm gonna give you a check. <clears throat> right, we'll do all the work. And that night, carrying our equipment in, we're helping to sell tickets. Yep. She got into it though. She started getting people to come. It was a fun night in memory of my guys. Mm -hmm. And and this is the cool part about. It. I said this on my show. I said this is pretty cool. The kid is nonverbal, so he has a computer, like a laptop, mm -hmm. with all icons on it. I'm hungry, you know, whatever. So she, so we're taking that picture that day with the big check in front of the house. And she says to, to him, Will, she's the Will, what do you want to say to John? Thank you. Wow. Aww. Oh, he's right. Aww. That's I mean, it. He melted. Yep. The comic in me wanted you to end with, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, how can, you can't replace that. You thing. can't. You really can't. And you also can't beat it into people <clears throat> how good it is you know how it, the benefits that you get from being good to other people it's it, uh, I, I swear to god i had more to say about this i'm very intimidated <laughs> by the amazingness when oh, we're holding we hands doing, now when we we're... were doing when we were doing the uh the veteran show <laughs> god, look how pale i am compared to when, you i know i just came back from key well. when we did the veteran show <laughs> <laughs> well, the next time that you say Key Largo, then I'm going to go Montego. Baby, why don't we go? Okay. Yep. When we did the veteran show, we haven't gotten back inside yet because of COVID, and I, I, I should call him today. I would say, com the comments would go, hey, John, I want to work for you. I want to do this. You got to do the veteran show first. Okay. Right, okay. Sure. I had comics like Jim Delacus. Mm -hmm. so, well, not, I didn't say that to Jim. You yeah, know, right. But I had comments like Jim Delacus because when they get there, I go, fourth floor, uh, bring down two patients. Third floor, bring, because they don't have the help. So the comics have to go to the rooms, oh, wow. wheel down the patients. The conversations in the hallway and in the elevators to those guys, priceless. <clears throat> yep. Priceless. And they love it. Did they love it. They love the attention. All right, I want to be part of your backstage crew for your next show. Well, I want to be, to be a, We do serve fruit. She wants to be a groupie. Go there? No, I, I want to yeah. be, I really want to be of service. Uh, April 27th, we're doing a show. Um, I think it's April 27th. We could use your help. This is how I get Leukemia invited to and things. Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Society or Association? Leukemia and Lymphoma Association. Society. 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 Do you, um, have you ever worked with Andy Pajanos? He's a veteran. No, but I'd like to meet him because we're doing this new Heroes tour. Whatever you <laughs> We're doing a new Heroes tour. Cops, mm -hmm. firemen, veteran, first responder, comics. Yeah, all right. Yeah, he, oh, he'd be great. Yeah. Raptors, <laughs> I'm anyway, sorry, you're talking too much. Not at all. I'm not sorry. At all. Not at all. Well, you, know, you know what it is? When I get on a show like this, um, <clears throat> and this is kind of fun. When I get on a show like this, I take it as being on stage. Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. You've got to be on. Right. I want to be on. I want to give you a good performance. <clears throat> Which you are. You know? Mm -hmm. well, and, but um, speaking of shows, though, yeah. so you have your show. Yeah. And you're talking about things, you know, that you can't replace, that feeling when a boy pushes yeah, yeah, the button and yeah, says thank yeah, you. But yeah. what you can replace yes. is Rich Walker. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, it's a problem. Yeah. You, it, you need more Roseanne, less Rich. It's a problem. He's not a real walker. As... as Somebody who, that's my real name. That That's not his real name. Oh, that's not a one-legged joke? No. no, it has nothing to do with the one leg. He, well, he, well, last night, 
Lindafi said, John, do you know Rich and I were partners for three shows? <coughs> and I go, yeah, I know that. But that's like being a partner with Rich. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Our, our chemistry, like I used to have Frankie on and yeah. Pat Marone, all funny guys, good friends of mine, John Sandler. But it's just something about oh, Rich is how great, he plays man. off of me. And I have a tendency, yep. you're not going to believe this, to talk a lot. <laughs> All right, and Rich can handle that, and and he's so like the stuff yes. he comes out and with. He makes me he makes me laugh. Yes, he absolutely. Really makes, we he's make great. each other laugh. We make, <clears throat> yeah. just by like in the firehouse, busting each other's balls. I always said, if you're not getting your balls busted in the firehouse, they don't love you. No, absolutely they right. Don't love you. In and life, how do you think me as a comic got <clears throat> hammered in the firehouse? I'm the funny guy that gets on. Oh, you're the funny guy. Right. Let's see how funny you are. But I mean, but I mean, right. every day I would get. Hammond. Um, oh, I had a funny story I wanted to tell you. I got hammered in a few firehouses. Hello. Hey. 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 Oh, hey. Hello, my baby. Drinking. <laughs> Drinking. Oh, my God. It's a, the, the, the ambulance <clears throat> was right there. Story. It was fine. <laughs> what do you, what's your full-time gig there, Johnny Lambros? I'm a security guard. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, uh, can we talk about where or not? No, I cannot. You cannot. It's the Ooh. pepper shop. No. Do you talk shop. about it in your app? No. Okay. Because no. I know wow. a lot of comics don't like talking about what they do during the day because mm-hmm. it takes away they feel I think they feel this way you tell me what you don't do it it takes away from them they want the audience to feel they're a comic mm-hmm. like but to me to me I think the audience your work you you were a wrestler oh my god that, you with all that, now you're working in security you're busting your ass and here you are on stage I think the audience can relate to that like look at this guy he's trying to make it a comedy <coughs> Busting his ass, he's a right. that, whatever. But, but I don't want to be typecasted as a specific type of comic, right, you know. Right, right. Like I don't want I don't want people to think of John Johnny Lambros as the security comic or the right. wrestler oh, comic. No, I'm not I want to be a well rounded yeah. comedian. Oh, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Uh, which and I understand what you're saying, yeah. but at yeah. the same time, if it helps them remember you, the wrestler comic, oh that guy. Like that right. that's a good well, thing. Well, I, I have some wrestling jokes. Um, okay. The first right. joke I ever told on stage was a wrestler joke. I went up there and I said uh, I said I'm sorry. sorry. I said I'm a former pro wrestler, and uh, I followed up by saying that's where the joke should end, right there. <laughs> you know, in reference <laughs> you to you know, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's also how you promote yourself on social media, though. And I know it's not like it's not that you're actually promote. You're not advertising. Hey, I'm Johnny, the former wrestler. <laughs> you're posting a lot of stuff about what you've been doing for the past couple of decades before you got well, to comedy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Very interesting. I would absolutely show up to I, one of your shows just to hear what you have to say about that. I've never met anybody who put that much time into becoming a wrestler. <clears throat> right. Is that why um, I see on Facebook you're friends with uh, Nathan Norton? Is that is that the wrestling well, connection with him? Or, or is that a comedy I, thing? When I met Nathan, it was on the set mm-hmm. of Comic Sans and uh, oh right when he did a set in yeah, yeah, yeah 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 the last thing I wanted to do when talking to Nathan was mention his brother or any inkling of wrestling at all mm. because I've been around guys who you know would do that with bigger star names sure. like hey nice to meet you is your brother around you know I don't right, want right. I don't want to be that guy you <laughs> right, know right so me and Nathan basically spoke everything but wrestling you oh, know okay and uh, we wound up getting along just great and we exchanged social media info and cool. he probably doesn't remember who I am. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. He's a great comedian. Very funny, too. Yep. Yeah, very funny. Yeah. I love and how we say everyone's very funny. And, uh, I bet you guys say I'm very funny. I'm not. Oh, no, my stand-up is terrible. <laughs> okay. I, I only saw you once, and I didn't think it was that bad. No, I did good with improv, though, at least. Mm-hmm. Improv is my animal. I'm here. Mm-hmm. Stand-up, you know, stand-up, you, you need to get up a lot. Yeah, you know that's another thing where somebody will call me and go, hey, you know, I want to do a show, or whatever, and I don't see them. It, I'm always looking at Facebook. <coughs> sure. I don't go to any open mics. Mm-hmm. I did that years ago, and it's an animal you need to do. Mm-hmm. But I'm not. I'm not going to do it anymore. And um, I see who's at the open mics, right. and I'll call guys like Rich Walker. Well, I see Rich John Butera, Mike Dillon, that uh, used to, and say, hey, I want to put somebody on a show. Who do you like? Who's really getting strong for five minutes? Let's give them a shot. You know. Right. Okay. Now, I'm mm-hmm. not do. I don't do bringer shows, um, and that's just not. It's a lot of work to do bringer sure shows. Sure is. Yeah. But I love the people who put down these people. I don't love the people who put down these people doing bringer shows. Who else is giving these comics stage time? Right. They know the mm-hmm. deal. The comics. I got to bring two people. I did it. I did mm-hmm. it. Audrey. You know, I'm not putting them on my show. Mm-hmm. So. 
I looked at these guys. It's a service there that Butera and guys like that mm -hmm. are doing. Because and listen, every one of those comics on that Brave show is not going to make it to the next level. Mm -hmm. It's oh, not. Yeah, right. Some people are never going to because they don't have the talent. Other people are not going to do it enough. You got to keep, and that's hard. I can't. I can't even fathom doing those open mics at my age now. Oh, forget yeah, it. Now. I, you know? I think it's more gratifying to be booked for your talent rather than be booked to be a seat filler. You know, yes, and, but you and have to people. get to that point. Right. And I yeah. think part of that is to bring a show. <laughs> right. The open mics, who are you performing in front of? Right. Comics. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the worst audience. It sure is. Because either you're getting, <laughs> and, you're, and you're, it's not funny. Right. they want to make me feel bad, or they're looking at their notes. Uh, that's right. what I was about to say. Well, they're just in yeah. their own notebook, yeah. <clears throat> and I, and I, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but um, the it, it's still part of the business. It, right. You know, just to... They need to make money. They're trying to make money. That's mm -hmm. so they they have to fill those seats, yeah, mm -hmm. which I mean, and it's tough. You know, mm -hmm. Butera. You know, you come to a show. You're talking. You know, you know, fifteen comics. Like, holy shit, it's a long Half night. Of them yeah. don't show up though. <clears throat> Speaking you still get at least 12. That's a lot, man. Speaking yeah. of Butera, I'll be at Farrell's this Saturday. Very nice. February 25th. I, yep, I was going to get to it. Don't worry. Okay. But go ahead. So um, w uh, Farrell's this Saturday? This Saturday, Ron Conkham in New York. Um, and then you're here March 10th in the Giggle Room. With Terry McNeely. With nice. Ter now that's a good show right yes. there. Very nice. <clears throat> um, let's see. So... Um, I don't know. I'm just looking at my Come notes. see me, people. I'm worth it. <laughs> <laughs> what am I looking at here? I mostly work for myself. Like, I, I, I do some shows for Butera. And mm -hmm. then I said I have to put me on some shows. Um, I did a show with you just before New Year's. Right. I did a, I did a guest spot on. Mm -hmm. uh, that was fun. Oh, you, were was on, fun. you were on the later show? No, no, no. Not... Uh, just before New Year's, it was like two or three days oh, not before the night New Year's. Oh, not the night. Uh, oh. Um, okay. just a, it was a Thursday, the last Thursday of the year uh, in the I, big I, room. I, I'm not the last say Thursday. The yeah. name. I did. Uh, I, I I shouldn't even say this yet. Um, we're gonna be we're gonna be working with the Long Island Comedy Festival on doing a show. For oh, Paris. okay. Yeah, cool. very and we're nice. also gonna be doing a show in Northport at the Engelman Theater. Very nice. Uh, for a few veterans organizations, that's mm -hmm. gonna be coming up in September. <clears throat> Um, and we're going to York, Pennsylvania. The comedy capital. Theater, theater not the comedy capital. But here's what happens. I teach a class. I teach for, well, I, I'm not teaching for Homeland Security anymore. But I teach for hazardous material stuff. I teach a meter to uh, drug teams, hazmat teams, bomb teams. It detects unknown solids and liquids. So they bring me in for a four-hour class. They do the class. And I go, by the way, how would you like to do a comedy show? Raise money for check. And so it, I'm going back to York. I taught there two years ago, and we're doing a show for mental, it's a mental health charity, I don't know, the, oh, Bart's Brigade, uh, we're doing that in June, and I'm bringing the Dario with me, we're going to go down there, um, so, you know, we got a lot of shows like that coming up, where it, it, I want to do more theater shows, and I want to do more hero shows, where we're using uh, health, I included teachers mm -hmm. in my hero shows now. As you should. Through COVID, through COVID, man, they did an awesome job. Healthcare workers, we started including, which is kind of funny. Oh, there weren't heroes before COVID. You know, like, hello, John, because I was just using cops for right. and, and veterans. For what? For, for, for the, uh, just what happened to all those people working in hospitals? People who were oh. never trained in trauma, that oh level God. of trauma response, to have to go to work every day and see those refrigerator yeah. trucks outside oh. and get sick themselves and sacrifice right. everything. For two solid years, these people gave up their lives to protect the rest yeah. of us. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, not to say, again, that they weren't <clears throat> heroes before, but right. I assume that with the fire department, like as with wrestling, you get appropriate training yes. to handle whatever situation's coming at you. No, they, they you can't. No training nope. to him. I spoke to a guy I used to work with as a firefighter, Chief Nelson, out of Oceanside. He's a, a chief now in the FDNY. I worked with him as a firefighter. He's been on my shows a few times and um, during the height of COVID. And I said, Chief, how's, how's it going out there? So he's in charge of nine companies, nine engine lives, the chief. He said, pre-COVID, we would respond, I think he said, one or two a week to do CPR. Mm-hmm. We're doing 15 a night. Oh, my goodness. And, and they were letting <clears throat> them pronounce people dead. N never before could a firefighter right. who has just basic training do that. Right. Jeez. So that's... Right. Five million people, though. <clears throat> it, you know... It, it, you know Jack Clooney? Comic Jack Clooney? No, I don't you recognize the name. 
He does. He, he doesn't do a whole lot of comedy. He works for me a lot. Jack. Oh, so your employee, Jack. <laughs> yes. Okay. Jack. I know Jack. Jack. Jack, as a child, had some type of cancer, um, but he had transplants. Is it his liver or is it his? What's the other thing in there? Liver. Stomach. No. Uterus. Fast Jack's deference. Kidneys. Was replaced. Three. Th- whatever it was. Jack was a mess. Lost all his teeth. Cancer. Oh my god. Suffered as a child. Got to whatever he was four or five years ago, and he started doing comedy. I mean, he, he, you could see he has a problem with his teeth because they come out. I mean, his teeth come out. So, so he said, uh, Johnny, I want to become an EMT. At the time, I don't know what he was doing. Volunteer EMT. Became a volunteer EMT. I want to get onto FDMY as a, as a first responder. He gets on EMS, FDNY, right before COVID broke out. Oh. Now, if you ever see Jack Clooney from moving forward... You're going to look at him differently. Mm-hmm. Right, because yes. Because this kid went through hell and with a smile on his face. Mm. Because. Every time, you sp- and when he gets on stage, and he's a good writer. He's a good comic. Mm-hmm. He's funny. He, he really is a different delivery. That makes, a smile on the face makes a difference. Yeah. It, it, it's such a huge difference I'm no matter I what. I my hero. He goes, Jack, you want to jump? <clears throat> Jack, you're my hero. Yep. Because once you already walk through hell, which is how I describe like when I was getting sober and with the domestic abuse and all that other stuff, and you, of course, going through 9-11, that once you walk out that other side of hell, it's just kind of, yeah, it's not as scary anymore. Yeah. So you can go and you can be the face in these situations to help people out, you know? It's... it. Again, but back to that whole generosity and giving thing, and you know, especially with for a guy with such a thick accent. Not that I don't have one. Yeah, but see, you you see, don't expect see, this to come out of you. You have to see me teach in Ohio. Uh, could you slow down? What did right. you say? Yeah. You know. <clears> oh <throat> yeah. yeah. But you know, you mentioned something before. My, I, I want to just give a little plug to yeah. my daughter, who's a psych nurse and mm-hmm. a uh, and uh, drug uh, addictions, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christina Marie, about four Thanksgivings ago, three days before, tried to commit suicide. My daughter. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Tried to commit suicide. And um, the hardest thing I ever had to do was, my wife couldn't go, go to that hospital and walk her into that uh, uh, the psych ward? The hospital by Long Island Jewish. Um, Zucker? Not Zucker? No. Whatever it is. It's a, it's, it's a They're nice all North Shore now anyway. Yeah. yeah right. So, um, and <laughs> watch true. the guy go, Miss LaRocchia, it's as far as you can go. Yep. And lock that door. Oh. Hardly, one of the hardest things I ever had to do with my daughter. My daughter finished that semester. She was in there for a week, uh, outpatient for a few months. Finished her semester in nursing school that semester. Uh, late, finished it, and is now a psych nurse helping people. Can anybody relate to them more than somebody like I'm so proud mm-hmm. of her. So proud of her. Wow. That's why I still go to 12-step meetings, because not only maybe I have something to offer to other people who were sure. in my situation, sure. but... Every time I go to a meeting, no matter what, I'm still able to glean something out of somebody's mm-hmm. share that touches me in a way that go. It's just that little extra bonus to say, I'm not doing this alone. Yeah. It's a horribly <clears throat> isolating feeling. If you get to that point where you prefer to not be alive anymore, you are very, very isolated. Yeah. And it's so, the regular person coming up to you and going, oh, I'm so sorry. Why, why don't you take a walk, get some fresh air? It's, no, you it, can't it doesn't work. No, can't not at all. I can't relate. So, some years back, I had a, um, a kidney stone. and oh my That God. totally sounds like everything else we were talking about. <laughs> Turning the mic off. ADHD, yes, he's so, um, so I, I was in the hospital. And it was a Friday, and, um, be, you know, it's a kidney stone. It's not. It's painful, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and because it was a Friday, they I, I was there for the weekend. And I think the, the stone was so small, just like my penis, that we couldn't find. We, we don't know if, if it actually passed or not. Right. But, but I was there. I was there for a few hours, and I was feeling fine, but they still kept me there for, for the weekend. I had to stay the whole weekend, even though I was fine. Like if you go to the and Nassau County Department of Corrections <coughs> facility in East Meadow. If you don't ever get arrested on a Friday, folks, just right. to let you know, yes. you're stuck there until Monday. It, that's exactly what happened. get arrested, that's a good day. Well, at least you'll be released that good day. Tonight. No, you won't be stuck there then. They'll oh, release right, you on right, two. Right. Even if you have to spend <coughs> the night, they'll release you on Tuesday. <coughs> So I don't know from experience. I, I was there, and there was a man who was... Um, 
he was across the hall from me, and he was losing. They were chopping off his leg the next day. Oh. So that so it, it was kind of like a weird deja, thing. Deja vu. It, yeah, I was like, now I'll be related to that guy. No, but they no, they actually said, "Can you go sit and talk to him?" Aww. And I did. I sat and talked to the guy and told him, you know. It's not that bad. It, you know, of course, it has its moments, but it's not the worst thing in the world, you know. And I live a pretty full life. So I didn't so even know. I didn't even know who was I talking to. Well, yeah, I think I asked you to play pickleball. Oh, that was. Now I'm there like an idiot. I'm sitting there. Well, I, I, I forgot I'm all like about that. I'm like, you, idiot. you just asked the guy. On, I got Lucia. You know Keith Goodwin with the one arm, one arm Keith, we used to call him. But one arm yes. Keith. One arm Keith. That's how you know me, he's from Queens. He beat me in golf. <laughs> he beat me in golf. No kidding. Yeah, well, you know, you would, you, I mean, I'm not saying you could, <clears throat> you know, play pickleball like somebody, but I guess you adjust and you, 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 you played and yeah. you practiced or whatever and... I, I, I'm a good golfer though, either. But I, I do get on a softball field sometimes, and yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, they get me out by a mile, but I'm just still happy yeah, to be out, out there, there playing, there. man. But I played I'm adult losing. kickball. <clears throat> do you know how much that sucks as an adult? Kickball as an adult. Why does it suck? Horrible. Because you go from not moving, not moving, not moving, not moving to shit. I gotta kick this thing and now run. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm tired from kickball. You ever go to kick the ball? And all of a sudden, you're pulling like a Charlie Brown, and you completely miss it. <laughs> and that happened to me. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you land on your ass like Charlie? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, but, and no one moved the ball, too. I thought I had it right there, and I just <laughs> missed it. So you I completely if... lost the entire point of the game kickball. <laughs> I wonder if I'd be better at it, like the titanium. But, like well, maybe it would... Pull it off like a bat. Yeah, now you're just, talking. You know, like a forward. I wish I could do that in my act. That would be great. Yeah. Um, all right. So, it is just about time for us to get going. I don't want to go to work. So, don't. So, one thing I like to do with m- with my guests, mm-hmm. um, I always look at your Facebooks, mm-hmm. and I <coughs> look to see who mut- what mutual friends we have. Okay. So, I'm just going to ramble off some names. Some of them you both know. Some of them it will just be for one of you. Uh, say whatever you want to say about them if you don't remember who they are, just say, you know, or if you don't want to say anything at all, that's fine, too. Uh, we're not trying to embarrass them. You can say whatever you want. So the first name I got is Allie Walker. See, I pick a good Walker. Allie Walker I haven't seen in a while. Oh. Uh, I think, she, and, and I don't <clears throat> throw his term around. I won't say they're funny. If somebody's not funny, I'm not going to say to you, oh, Allie, no, Allie's funny, and I'm going to be working with her, I think, on a show coming no. up. Very nice. I think she, it's a Butera show, in fact. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, she's great. I don't uh, know. I don't know her that well. Nice girl. Nice, I've, nice I've never met her, but uh, you right. know what? I've never met a walker I don't like. <laughs> nice, good Especially answer. With the good tennis answer. balls on the bottom. <laughs> 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 I had to think about that. One. They now have skis. You don't have to do the tennis balls anymore. You can put they have oh. skis that make it so much easier oh, yeah? to slide the walker. Yeah. Do you like the, Do you like skiing? No. Oh. But I like walkers. Because so you, you're good. in between me and John, you could ski like you know. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Johnny would like that one. Uh, Greg Halverson. Greg, yes, yes. How do you I, know Greg? I did an independent film with him. Ah. Uh, it was <laughs> it was recorded with one shitty little camcorder on a random neighborhood in Westbury. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And uh, there was a scene in particular. I was still wrestling at the time. Yeah. And the director wanted me to shoulder tackle him as I was running away from <laughs> whatever was going on. So I, I asked Greg, I'm like, do you want me to go light? You know, because you've seen Greg. He's... An average size guy, yeah, you know. Sure. He goes, nah, dude, run me over. He's a dedicated actor. I'm that like, one. are you serious? He goes, yeah. I'm like, all right. So the director goes, all right, action. I'm running full speed. I bulldoze him <laughs> over. The director goes, well, let's do that two more times. I'm like, are you <laughs> out of your mind? <laughs> and Greg's like, and Greg was a good sport. He's like, come yeah. on, let's go. <laughs> so I, I can see this somewhere. Or huh? You, I could see this uh, on Facebook. I, I don't know if it's on any other platform. So, um, it's called the Night Sky. It, it's uh, the night, night as in night, evening, or as night at, as in my Lord. night of shining yeah, armor. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Night as in night, night, like evening, nighttime. Yeah, yeah. nighttime. Because night, night cleared it up. Yeah, it, it's a short. <laughs> it's a short film about paranormal activity. You know, and it's. Uh, I I want to see you bowling Greg over. That's hilarious. <laughs> I, I have one important question though. You said it's the Westbury area, north or south of all country road. I don't remember. I just know it was in Westbury. The the address I was given. You would know if you were in Salisbury. No, that's true. I would. You would know, yes. Yeah, you definitely Many, many potholes. So many potholes. uh, Let's see. um, Andrew Fremder. I only know of him 
because of the show. Well, he's he's on your list too, no? No? All right. You know, if I see it's a comic sometimes, I'll friend him if they're friending me. <clears throat> Uh, speaking of comics, Brian Paul just signed on. He said, sorry he's late. Can you guys start over? Yeah, hold your breath, Brian. Just um, like last time, Brian. That's right. <laughs> Billy, Brian. Billy Geyer. Love Billy. Love Billy. Love Billy. Everybody love Billy. loves Billy. I'm not, you're Billy's, not asking me. I love just, Billy's delivery. Oh, that's cute. Um, and he, he knows my shows are a little cleaner. And he's very respectful. When my, he's my, great. my first two years in comedy, I kept getting mistaken for him. Uh, I, oh, I, I can I'm see not, that. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, Ar- especially when you have your beard. Mm-hmm. Arnie Price came up to me one time at an open mic in the in the giggle room. It was called the Little Room back then, and he had this mm-hmm. uh, app where you can, like swap people's faces out. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Look at this video I made of you," and it's a and it's his <laughs> face and Billy Geyer's face. I'm like, "Dude, that's not me." He goes, "You're not <laughs> Billy Geyer." I'm like, "No, I'm Johnny Lambros." He's like, "The fuck?" <laughs> I think the animals kicked in. They just <laughs> you should have been like, am I wearing a hat? I am clearly not Billy Guy. It's actually a good idea, though. You guys should do something together. Yeah. Like a film of some sort. Oh, I always call him my twin. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Brian McGinnis. Brian McGinnis. No? Oh, all right. Um, mm, uh, Mark Hirschman. I've heard of him. Oh, okay. You're, um, you're friends with him on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. All right. Mark Riccadonna. I've heard of him. Pros, pro. Absolutely. He's been doing it in this business a long yep. time. He got married here. Oh, uh, did he? In the main club. He got married he on stage. He's a gentleman. Yep. A pleasure to work with. Yep. You know, during the height of COVID, we did a telethon because we bought a few thousand masks. We got, there was some way that I was able to get them through a contractor, and he was one of the comics that came on. It was, it was you could see it. In fact, Joe Piscopo opened it up. Joe Piscopo oh, has been wow. great to us. At Laugh to Save Lives. Wow, wow, very nice. I've been on his, his radio show probably five times. Cool. Very yeah. cool. Good guy. I feel like I just bumped up a level in celebrity because I'm doing a show. <laughs> <laughs> I got a great story about next time with, with Joe Piscopo on the show. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I would love to hear that. I hope so. Freaking better be. Can I, I be here so. next time too? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I'll just come in. With, hey, you know what? I think that we should let the regular viewers decide if they want me to come oh, back. Oh, that... I Careful will listen you to them. For. If you tell me never come back, I will never come back to the show. <laughs> um, Christy Miller. The muscle, the muscle girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's awesome. She's great. She's awesome. I have yet to meet her, but I want to. Oh, okay. She's, she's no when you say the mu- yeah. does she do a whole bit about arms? She she, she's, a, she's a power she wor- she's okay. a, she, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Candace. Who's, whose list is Burr. this? Oh, John LaRocchi. Candace Kane. My name is Candy Kane. I love that. <laughs> Filmmaker? Does that help you? Oh, yeah. You know, with my screenplay, I'm always reaching out to different people. <clears throat> oh, I think okay. I have the right team in place now. Um, it's hard. Oh, it's hard. crazy hard. Um, let's see. Eric Tartaglioni. Mm. He's very funny. Nice guy. Very very funny. Funny. Eric, really Eric nice is guy. good friends of mine from the very beginning. I've been doing comedy for 30 years. Yeah. <clears throat> big, big meth fan. Huge meth fan. But Eric does not sit in his seat at the Met game. He's constantly walking around the stadium. What do you mean? He just he, him, to, he does not sit in his seat. He just invite. He just said to me, "We got to go to a Met game this summer." I was like, "Okay, yeah, that'd be uh, great." Maybe if he's going with somebody, you know, we, we all should go. And we should, oh, LK, love that. I mean, yeah, um, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in him and um, him and Williamson came to me. We got to go to a Met Have game. Have you ever gone to Met spring training? No. You've got to. Go. I know. It's everybody so tells me that before the game starts. <clears throat> yep. Like now. I know. You can stand it. If you reach out, you can catch a ball that they do yep. the, they have a middle mounds. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a wonderful experience. I know. That's what everybody tells me. We, I know. One of these days. We did comedy shows around spring training. So I had with me Butera, Santo, uh, Pat Marone. Um, we, we had a freaking ball. Oh. And Pat Marone told everybody that would listen that we were a couple. <laughs> we went to check into the hotel. She goes, Mr. Marone, Marone I got you in this room. Oh, no, no. King bed for the two of us, please. I mean, would you stop? In a restaurant, we said to the girl, the girl, we want to take a video in uh, the famous restaurant out there. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. The sports bar. So the attractive waitress comes over. Not the said, ugly waitress. And I said, no, no. Okay, young, thank God. Cute, that makes a big waitress. difference. Nobody wanted very to see the ugly waitress. And, and, uh, they would have been I said, let's take, Pat, let's take a video with her. Right, <clears throat> and send it to Steve Oliva back in New York. He says, Hey, here's what we're doing out here, right? So the girl comes over to the table, and Pat's sitting there. and I look at the girl, I go, Hey, did you make a video with us? And Pat goes, No, no, <laughs> he doesn't mean that kind of video. And I'm like, What are you doing? Oh, 
It was hysterical. Not you say no to that either. Yeah, told her that we were a couple. <coughs> That's great. Um, Danielle Pagalatis Liebline. Holy. I know that's what a hell of a name. It's what? on your it's on your list. I ha- I I have so many Facebook friends. I should go through them. Right. But <clears throat> all right. D- how about Dennis Rooney? He's a comic. Right? Oh, he's a great comic. Yeah. Tall guy, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. I've very seen tall him. guy. Well, he's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> how about Ed Nickowitz? No. Remember, I book shows. I know. So I know. comics reach out to me, and I, I'm not gonna not friend a comic <clears throat> who's you know. Lou Pratt. Ooh, Ooh. Ooh. comic. <gasps> Brian's father. Yes! Brian's father. Great guy. Oh, great I love guy. Him. I great, love great Brian. Guy. Whenever I see him, we talk to Disney. It's <clears throat> yes. so cute. Yep. He's such a nice guy. Uh, we mentioned Landolfi before. Right. Yes. Yep. Uh, we mentioned nice. Nathan Norton. Uh, Derek Mutispoor is on your list. Mr. Poppins was. Mr. Poppins I haven't Twist. seen him in a long time. Oh, he lives literally right down the block. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did he make a balloon of you? No. I've he met should. him. I've actually met him because I was friends with Brimstone. Mm-hmm. So I know Brimstone. I yeah. saw him le- you know, on Monday when I left here. He was, he, he and I were walking back. He's got together. his studio right across the yes, parking lot. Yes, he does. Yep. I'm trying to cash in. He he has his podcast studio. He, I don't know if I'm talking out of turn. He dumped all of his shows. He got rid of everybody. He's only doing his own show over he still there. Still is Kim, right? So I'm trying to I'm trying to grab his shows. <laughs> um, oh, Kim is still there. Yes. Yeah, Kim is still there. And well, I, Steve <coughs> got married. Steve Zambito married his longtime girlfriend, and after that, he wasn't part of the show anymore. Right, but what I'm saying is, he had other shows. He had other people come in to do mm-hmm. shows there, my, and he got rid of them all. He my only does his own show. And his youngest went to preschool together. Oh, that's cool. Oh. So that's how I got to know. The wife is outstanding. Mm-hmm. Brimstone, I love you, but oh man, it's all about Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> no, Danielle's amazing. Um, but that's how I got to know him. So I got to know him on like a parent level. Mm-hmm. And the first time that I meet him, nice guy. Like, yeah, and I'm, oh, yeah, yeah, because you know, got the long hair, yeah. got the rings, the mm-hmm. whole thing. Oh, so what do you do? I'm Brimstone. Okay, that's cute. <laughs> 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 all right, my last name is Richie Byrne. Richie Byrne. Not my last name, the last name on my list. Right. Yeah. Richie Byrne. <laughs> Richie Byrne, comedian. I know Richie Byrne. Yeah, oh, he's, he's good. Yeah. He's good. Yeah, high yeah. energy. Uh, again, Hilarious. Always, uh, always comes to play. You know what yep. I'm saying? Yes. There are comics like that, Richie Byrne. The lot. When you're a producer, you go, I want to give somebody new a new chance. I want to get through the next half hour. And as soon as they step on your stage, they, you go, I'm going to look brilliant. <laughs> right after the show, John, what a great <clears throat> show. And yep. I love, when I can get to that point in the show and people are laughing, having a decent time, I'm like... I'm gonna look. I'm gonna. Look, I'm Absolutely. Gonna next year. Is Absolutely. that why I always get like spot two or spot three? <laughs> you just want to make everyone well, else look better. Spot. I don't get spot one ever. Yeah, well, you want is a spot. Just Tony, while you're out of the room, um, I uh, if, uh, hopefully you didn't mind. I plugged my friend's uh, store. Oh, that part. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. okay. Oh, I want. <laughs> <laughs> look at you! Look at you making up things. <laughs> I, that's what I do. Um, I'm a woman. If any of you out there are in the Riverhead, New York area, and shopping at Tanger Outlets, um, stop by Pepper Palace. They have uh, a whole different assortment of uh, hot sauces. My friend Barbara is the head manager, so stop by. Tell them Johnny Lambro sent you, and uh, get yourself some hot sauces. I'll burn your butthole. And uh, somebody's trying to get some. Is that why he's kissing up to this woman? That's my guess. No, I, you know what? If you're gonna if you're gonna have a rendezvous with somebody who who does we'll burn spicy your butt. things, yeah, yeah that's uh, that, that's a different kind of freak. You know, that, that, that's a level that even I've never gone. To. <laughs> uh, and all right, so it's this weekend at the loft. No, 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 this weekend oh, Farrell, at, at Farrell's, Farrell's, Farrell's sorry, sorry. Um, mm-hmm. Brian Paul will be the MC, okay. uh, Claudia Bonavita's headlining, <clears throat> oh, right. and I'm on the lineup, uh, and March then 10th March 10th, 10th, I'll be right here in the Google <clears throat> Room with Terry McNeely. Very, Very nice. nice. And how do they... Uh, how do people find you? You got, you know, like how to uh, Facebook and whatnot. I'll put it very simple. If you go on any form of social <clears throat> media and put hashtag Johnny Lambros Comedy, you'll find me through there. Perfect. Johnny Lambros Comedy. And laughter saves lives. Laughter saves lives dot org. Scroll in there, you'll see our shows. Uh, we, we're having a problem, by the way, with the donate button on the website. Oh, well, that's not good. No, <laughs> so right. What I'd like people to do is try try it. Like you put in like you five hundred dollars and press it. Oh, and see, and let me see try that out works. right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to help you. I want this. And let me know if it works. I, I appreciate laughter. it. Laughter. And the the show on. Um, on Str- Strong Island is what, every Wednesday? Every Wednesday, 8 o'clock, <coughs> Strong Island Television. Um, Ran by my buddy Bobby Lacerra. 
Yes, yeah. Bobby, Bobby, great guy. Um, yeah. And we, Richie, Richie Walker co-hosts most weeks. Roseanne Sorrentino fills in for him. Um, and we have a good time. Have Very nice. Week, Excellent. Why am I getting an error message for my credit card information? Oh, boy. What the hell? Oh, no. Now you're I'm going to be disputing some stuff. <coughs> uh, Get ready all right. to dispute. <clears throat> oh, it's Brian Paul's first official hosting gig, he says. Good for him. Good, for, good for you, Brian. Good for him. Very nice. All right. He we, is the funniest. The, well, he is the funniest, he is the Brian, funniest. Brian Paul, yes. I hope he makes me look good when he announces my name. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're out of here. Uh, today is Thursday. we got nothing tonight. Tomorrow we'll be back here. Uh, Andy is taking the day off. We have... Helene Witt is coming in, and Will Fa- uh, Will Sharon will be here. Where did that okay. come from? Will Sharon, one of my favorites. He'll be in here with us. Um, and then this Saturday, live from Governor's Green Room, me and Don Sill will be in here this weekend. And um, the funniest Brian Paul says, nothing can make you look good, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm wait, wait, just the messenger here. <clears throat> so uh, thank you. Whoa. Whoa. Wait, like, wait till the cameras are off. <laughs> Um, Does thank you. Now? No, you're sandwiched between two Johns. Thank you, guys. This thank was a lot you, of fun. Tony. Thank you very much. All right, we'll Appreciate see you guys you. later. Have a great uh, Thursday. And uh, thank you, Mo, of course. Thank you, Mo, for hanging out. Let me know if you want me to come back, kids. Uh, absolutely. All right, we'll see you guys later. See ya. Bye. Yeah.